Good evening and welcome to today's video. I keep saying it to myself, I don't make enough videos for this particular channel, but I think that's going to change. Um, I've just come off a live stream uh, with wonderful Rachel the Music Man. Uh, thanks for having me on, Rachel. Um, talking to uh, Ron Baudry, Rockin' Ronnie, um, and Mazzy, of course, Norman Maslov, and uh, a couple of others, of course. Um, I'm sorry, names go by me at the moment, so, um, but thanks for subscribing to my channels, I've subscribed back to you. So yeah, I thought I'd, I'd do this quick video tonight of what I think, um, limited but not limited to, five post-punk albums I think you, th you should have in your collection. Um, there's many I could have chose from, but I just picked five. You may think there's a better five, and you might well be right. But uh, kicking off, one post-punk album I think you should really have in your collection is The Cure 17 Seconds. Spawning a massive hit in a forest, the whole thing has got a certain ambience about it, it's got a certain feel. Um, it is hard to describe, but I don't think The Cure ever made an album like this again. Very sort of, production's great. I don't think anybody else has made an album like this, to be honest. It is not particularly poppy, even though A Forest had a massive top 40 hit in the UK and around the world. It's just got a certain ambience. It's got a certain something about it. It is a whole record. Um, it doesn't sound like 10 disjointed songs whacked together to form an album. It feels all of its own, if you know what, what I mean great album post-punk fan you gotta have that seriously you've, you've got to have that in your collection i can't sing its praises high enough and actually this isn't even my favorite cure album this is my second favorite um my main favorite is faith the one that came after this which is a lot more darker in tone admittedly but this has got something where they were changing from um a Pop e oriented oriented orientated band where they did stuff like Boys Don't Cry into something slightly darker but still having a certain something. That definitely gave them chart visibility. Faith took it a whole different tone deeper. Uh, and yeah, that's when they went really dark with sort of disintegration after that. And the Doom, including the Doom trilogy. Gotta have it. You gotta have it, it's a wonderful album. Next, I've got uh, Gang of Four. Yeah, Songs of the Free. Now, I saw the Gang of Four back in September 81 at Stafford Future Armor 3. And I will be honest with you, totally honest, they bored the pants off me. I actually walked out and got myself a burger and went back in after, after they'd finished. But I saw 20 minutes of a set and I thought, ah, it's not, not, not great, not for me. They were frenetic, which is what their trademark is. They were angular. Uh, and the singles preceding this album, this album, preceding this album, were fantastic. So back to 1981. This is a much later album. But those singles were fantastic. But for me, on that particular night, the live experience didn't really live up. Not to say they were sloppy, they weren't. They were, sh I wouldn't say a naughty word, then they were really, really tight. It just didn't work for me. But this album, moving forward, I think it was the next year, wasn't it? 82, yeah, 1982. They put out I Love a Man in a Uniform. One of the best tracks I've ever heard, then or, or after. And the 12 inch mix, superb. By that time, the band had pared down a little bit. They'd uh, lost the original bass player. And uh, slightly changed, but yeah, post-punk, different. More of like a funky sort of beat, really. Um, but it works. It really works. Which is why, you know, I put stuff like Tom Tom Club in as a post-punk band. Seriously. I actually noticed that something you, you tend to forget over the years, this one is a promo, which is very nice, which I probably knew when I bought it, but uh, long forgotten about. 
Yep, Gang of Four, Songs of the Three. You need to have that in your collection. Another superb album. Uh, and for my next pick, it is the one and only Iggy Pop Soldier. With uh, the Pistols Glenn Matlock on bass. Um, Steve New and Barry Andrews. Uh, Barry out of Shriek Back and Steve New. I think Steve played in um, The Rich Kids with Glenn, of course. Now this is great. I could have I could have picked the idiot, which was would have gone into that category as well. Um, or even Lust for Life. But for me, Soldier kind of really it's almost Stooges, but with like um, a post-punk vibe to it. I mean, I love it. You know, knocking them down in the city. Uh, you know, it, the whole album's great. I'm conservative. I snub you. Get up and get out. Ambition, take care of me. I need more. Loco Mosquito, Mr. Dynamite, Play It Safe, Dog Food. There's not one Duff track on this album. This is a superb Iggy album. Um, and in my, my humble thoughts... I think it is the last great Iggy Pop album. Even though he had chart success with the um, Cry For Love in 85, this is raw Iggy. This is almost Stooges Iggy. But this is so superb. You've got to have that in your collection if you're a post-punk fan. And also picking up the very wonderful Second Hand Daylight, uh, which on certain times of the, the year, I can put this at number one uh, of my favorite albums ever released. Uh, you know, another day it could be, it could be Crosby, Stills and Nash, you know, debut, it could be anything, but <laughs> This does come out seriously on top of post-punk goodness. You know, wonderful. Um, let me see now. Rhythm of Cruelty. Uh, Feed the Enemy. I mean, the, the whole album is, again, it's almost like The Cure's album I showed you just early, uh, earlier. Uh, but uh, this has another particular different vibe to it. And again, it's complete. It's not just like... 10 tracks chopped together to form an album. It's a concise piece. It is, to me, it's a work of art. It's uh, got this in its gatefold form. There you go. Howard Devoto, Oop. lead singer extraordinaire, uh, former protege, protege, that's not the right word for it. Howard Devote was one of the Buzzcocks right at the start where they produced Spiral Scratch, which was their first home produced single. Then Howard left to form the magazine. Barry Adamson, incredible bass player. And the bass playing on this album is just incredible, honestly. Uh, and you've got, let's see now, Dave Formula, um, a chap I'm proud to call a mate on keyboards. John Doyle on drums. Um, I liken John to almost like the Ringo Starr of post-punk as he kept that beat metronomically. Not too flashy, but he just held, he was the glue that held it together with the bass playing. And uh, my ultimate guitar hero actually, John McGeoch. Um, privileged to be welcomed by his family and be allowed to uh, visit where John uh, is now resting forevermore very privileged to for them to be able to trust me and let me know where that is um yeah this is superb uh, the, the best slab of post-punk ever in my humble opinion some people would say joy division unknown pleasures pleasures or closer um it's not to put a pun on it it's close but no cigar honestly magazine second hand daylight that's what you want. That is really what played up loud. It's it's like nothing on earth. And some people say that uh, playing post punk stuff is just noise. 
It lacks emotion. Oh no. Quite the reverse, actually. It's not noise. It's very well crafted songs. On especially all of these five albums I've shown you. And um, the playing is superb. The skills, craftsmanship of these guys. Um, and in Gang of Four's case, Guys and Gal for that particular album. Superb, beyond reproach, fantastic. So, quick run through. Personally, I think if you're interested in the post-punk genre, magazine, Secondhand Daylight. Iggy Pop and Soldier. Gang of Four, Songs of the Free. The Cure, 17 seconds. And I'm saving my favorite until last, really. It's where this particular band crossed over from their first two albums from the punk genre. Uh, split and then re-came together uh, for the album preceding this one. This one I'm about to show you, in my humble opinion, is the pinnacle of that group. Uh, they never bettered it. And it is... Susie and the Banshees and Juju. Featuring John McGeoch out of Magazine. Um, the Banshees were the band that John left Magazine for. Um, incredible tracks, very, very dark. Again, not tracks just chucked together to form an album, but a cohesive whole. Uh, massive top 40 hits with Spellbound and Arabian Nights. Into the, into, what is wrong with my words today? I apologize. Into the Light is just a superb, incredible song. Um, it's all good. All playing from all the people on this band, in this band, is superb. But John's guitar playing in Into the Light is something else. Arabian Nights, of course. Halloween. Dark as the title would suggest. Love it. Monitor. Oh, God, I've got goosebumps thinking about these songs. Night Shift, Sin in My Heart, Head Cut, Voodoo Dolly. Side 2 is incredible. The whole damn thing's incredible. Don't take my word for it. Try and get some samples of this stuff. You know? See what you think. But in my list for today at least, Susan and the Banshees, Juju. Put it in your to buy pile. So there we go. Top five for me today. I figured out why I'm bumbling over my words now. It's because I'm so excited showing you these albums. These albums that have meant so much to me over many decades. So. Yeah, take my advice, it's good advice. And um, enjoy. There's a darkness and a difference compared to the other bands at this time period. Uh, I don't think we'll see that sort of thing again, unfortunately. So, pot pickers, or should that be post punk pot pickers? I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.